Welcome everyone. My name is Maureen Antunes, Festival Director for Spark Animation and the President of the Vancouver ACM SIGGRAPH Chapter. Very, very pleased to be here today to introduce a great team of individuals as part of our Meet the Filmmakers series for Spark Animation Online. Um, we have with us today Jared and Jerusa Hess, the directors of 95 Senses, and also Miles Romney, the co-founder and head of the MASS program. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, excited to be here. Miles, well, actually, I, I wanted to start with you because this project is a really interesting one in the way that it's come about. Can you talk a little bit about the Salt Lake, Salt Lake City Film Society and the MASS program specifically? Absolutely. Uh, the Salt Lake Film Society has a mission of, of educating through cinema. And one of the programs that, uh, that we have mounted in order to do that is the MASS Accelerator Program. It's, uh, it's for up and coming uh, animators and uh, filmmakers. We connect them with mentors in the industry. We give them grant money uh, to be able to complete uh, their projects and then help them sell, sell those projects into the industry as well as uh, putting them through a, a, um, a, quite, quite a lot of education in, in the form of labs and mentorship when it comes to uh, growing into what we call uh, artist entrepreneurs, uh, giving, giving them the tools that they need to survive uh, in the industry. Uh, and this, the, the, this film, 95 Senses, came out of uh, one of our, what we call our springboard contests, an animation contest. We took six winners and uh, then went to uh, Jerusha and, and Jared Hess with the concept, and they were uh, very generous from the beginning in, in diving in and getting excited about it. Uh, we connected with, with the screenwriters uh, Chris Bowman and Hubble Palmer, uh, who have uh, worked with uh, with Jerusha and Jared for years, and uh, which uh, which and uh, who I've known for years, and asked them to write a script for us that would uh, allow us to divide it amongst six, six different animators with their own styles. And they did. They produced a gorgeous script. Uh, Jerusha and Jared did a just a phenomenal job coming in and directing it, and uh, the animators did beautiful, beautiful work in uh, bringing it to life. Well, Jared and Jerusha, could you guys talk a little bit about what it was about this program and then this film that appealed to you? Because it's quite different than the other work that you've done in the past, beginning with the fact that it's animated. Right, right. Yeah, you know, we, um, you know, we live here in Salt Lake City and, and we've been involved in the Salt Lake Film Society for a number of years. We're good friends with Tori Baker, who's um, who heads uh, the Salt Lake Film Society up, and we've known Miles for years. <clears throat> I actually was a horrible cinematographer in one of Miles' uh, uh, short films um, years ago uh, when we were in film school. So it, it, super fun opportunity. And, you know, Jerusha and I, we're actually in the middle of, of um, directing and writing an animated feature for Netflix right now. So animation has been a passion of ours for a long time. And when Miles brought this project to us we were just over the moon about being able to be a part of it so and it's just amazing to collaborate with just up and coming artists and filmmakers and that's the thing that made me excited the most was there a script when you guys signed on no not yet just... but that came and we were excited when it came in and it was so good we were like oh man this is this is going to be really fun to bring to life and it was great because it was already set up as Miles said, to have different artists kind of take their own chunk and bring their own style to it. And speaking of the various artists, I mean, this is a very different approach to, to filmmaking because it does have these very, um, the visual styles are all quite different between sections. Did, did the animators have a, a choice of what they wanted to animate? How did that process of sort of dividing the sections and who would do what start to develop? I don't remember, Miles, how we divided it, honestly. I think we just kind of assigned them, um, knowing the strengths of each animator. We didn't know them well, but we knew Daniel. Um, Brusson. Yes, mm -hmm. we knew he was going to do the tight, like the, the intro and the little interstitial moments, because we really loved his style for those. And then the other ones, I think it just kind of randomly happened, right, Miles? And uh, the screenwriters had some great input on that too. They uh, they knew the work of the animators uh, before they started writing. So, and, and they, they took that into account as they were writing, which I, I think was a strength. Yeah. It, it's difficult enough to have, you know, one or two visions for a project. In this case, you have like 
maybe 16, maybe more. So you, have, you have all the animators, you have yourselves, you have the writers who have their own take on the material, you have your voice talent, in this case, Tim Blake Nelson, who also has his take on the material. How does this all start to come together to create this cohesive vision? Because the film plays beautifully and it does have a very sort of cohesive feel, even though it is quite different every few minutes. Yeah, yeah. I think, <clears throat> I mean, for me, it's just the strength of the performance of Tim Blake Nelson. He really is the glue and the voice that's carrying you through the whole entire story. And um, I think when we were able to record him in, <clears throat> in New York and spend a day with him, and he was so passionate about the project and the script from the get-go, just fell in love with it and, and totally came on board. And I think when we started to do the string out of his um, of his performance and, and all the narration, it seemed pretty clear. He really set the tone of what it needed to be and just brought the emotion and the comedy and, and everything to it. So that, that really became, I think, the thread that everybody hung their material on, right? And that's kind of what makes it consistent and such a, a beautiful story. But there was also some character design where we, here's the character, here's a, a, here's a couple images that we gave to people like here's here's what we want this guy to look like make sure whatever you whatever you animate we stay within these parameters and so I think that also is the thing that helped it. Jerusha you bring up a great point this idea to keep the a, a common through line in the visual style even though it's changing all of the time so what were you using as a reference? You mentioned like a, a picture, but like what other uh, items were you using as a reference to make sure that even though there was room to play and be unique, there was still this feeling that this is one cohesive story? Yeah, I mean, I think we just told everyone, we had a few images of, of people we found just on the internet, right? And I, I had a, my nephew, I used his picture. I was like, this is what I want him to look like as a kid. Imagine what this kid would look like as an adult. Um, there was a body type we kind of kept with, you know, this barrel chested man, who's kind of strong. Um, there was a chip tooth. So we just had some little key markers that each of them picked, but then, you know, they, they changed quite, you know, there's, I remember in the taste one, I'm like, Ooh, he looks suddenly really different, but it's still charming and, and you get it. How important was it to make sure that the tone of the film stayed consistently, I, I hate to say upbeat, but it does kind of feel like it has a very sort of light and um, uh, emotionally, it's a very sort of uplifting story, even though it's not. Mm -hmm. How important was it to ensure that, you know, you kept that tone throughout? Well, I think the story, you kind of you kind of want to surprise the audience that he's in jail. And so you want to just take the audience on this little journey of memories. And and it's, you know, it's really whimsical, his his description of the senses until you get to the moment where you realize, oh, my gosh, he's he's on death row and he's facing his last day. So I think that is. Yeah, I think it was a, a purposeful move to keep it light and, and also have a lot of hope in the end. I mean, I think that's also the message we're telling is that there is hope and we might not know what happens, but we can, we can all hope, right? I mean, you guys are used to working together. So, you know, you know how you all, you work and what, what works best for you and your quirks and whatever else, but now you have all of these other people working as well. How different was it how different was the experience from, you know, making a film on your own as a pair to making a film now with this group in a very different way, in a very different style as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it was super fun. I mean, I think, uh, you know, we were able to have, you know, I think we had kind of a big kickoff Zoom because people were scattered all over the world. I mean, our animators were, I don't know, in how many different countries, including the United States. Um, and but it was really fun, I think, when we saw what their styles were, what their strengths were, and then just really kind of launching them. You know, I, I think it was like they were so talented. We just wanted them to really own creatively what they were doing and and feel like they didn't have any restrictions on where they could go with it. And so, you know, I, I just remember getting in the initial ideas where they would 
pitch us their storyboards and do, you know, initial animation tests and just being blown away. It was like, oh my goodness, like let these people just do what they're going to do. It, it'll be great. And then obviously we had to, you know, work on transitions and just kind of adapting it in a few places where, you know, it, just kind of managing tone and making sure that it it felt like it was okay are we too dark here let's bring it back a little bit and make it happier or, you know all of those things but they just all delivered everybody just delivered in such a fun unexpected way and and um it just it really all came together was this produced during the pandemic yes completely <laughs> so it was one of those those zoom projects we started in in 2019 right miles yeah, it kicked off in 2019. Yeah, but uh, but then uh, re really took off during the pandemic, and we finished it uh, right at the end of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. So really, thematically, I think we were all in these kind of dark places in our homes, and it was just such a delightful little project that kept popping up over the months. Like, oh my gosh, look at this! And and maybe I don't know. I don't know how much the pandemic anxiety and sadness fueled people, but I'm sure there's something in there. Yeah, yeah. Because it was potent. They really, they really delivered beautifully. So what did those days look like for you two as directors when you were working on the project? Because you're not even in a studio where you're able to interact with your artists and your create creators. So what does that look like for you, you know, on a day-to-day -day when you're working on this film? No, it probably would have gone a lot faster if I just would have picked up a phone and called them because <laughs> emails, you sometimes, you know, you, you don't get everything that you, that you were intending to come across in an email. So I, I don't know. I think it's, um, you know, we learned, we learned along the way. That's good though. I mean, our animated film we're doing right now, it's still entirely every day we're directing over Zoom and it's been that way for the past three years it's like our production company all of our animators are in Montreal and Paris and then people are you know our storyboard teams are, are spread out over California and you know we got people everywhere so it's actually a very normal thing now like I, I don't think we know how to direct animation other than over zoom which is weird but um, but in 2020 it was fresh yeah 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 <laughs> it was 95 cents is a bit of like a, a testing ground for you <laughs> yeah a little you know it's funny we were kind of doing both projects or starting them both at the same time and obviously this one finished a, a, a lot quicker but um yeah I mean it's it's but it's been fun I yeah mean, we it, benefited it, it, from the mass program just as much as the animators yeah there you go <laughs> so what, what was the key thing that you two learned from this experience boy um it's just it's just fun to collaborate with so many different artists. I mean, I I think um, like just really letting people contribute and not having such a restrictive kind of narrow vision on what something can be. And and you do have to have a vision, obviously, um, and a point of view. But I, there's such a beauty into letting people just kind of run with an idea and let them do their thing. Yeah, but I think I think to your point, it, it was our job to direct the tone of it, and that was with the editing and the and the music and um, yeah, the vocal performance. Yeah, so, so we yeah. just we just were like gently pushing along the tone, but mostly it 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 kind of did itself. Yeah. I I, I wanted to touch base a little bit back on you know the tone and music and the voice. Did you guys record Tim before you started doing any animation? I think we had, I think we had kind of ideas, roughed out ideas from each of the animators before we got um, his recording. Yeah. And, and so how did um, the music play into it as well? Because the music is also pretty important to the storytelling. Yeah, yeah. So we um, are good friends with a, a really amazing composer named John Hancock, also lives here in Salt Lake City. And, um, you know, it's funny when we were initially talking with Tim Blake Nelson about the music, he was curious about it. He's such a brilliant guy and, and um, I think is a musician himself, but really, really interested in what the music was going to be. And we were talking about it as we were talking about 
the voice he was going to do and, and, and everything, he was like, yeah, it seems like this guy probably listens to John Prime, who is, you know, very famous, like, you know, folk artist. And we were like, oh, man, that's not a bad idea. So we started listening to like some of the guitar stuff and a lot of his work. And that was kind of the genesis a little bit of, of the idea of keeping it kind of in that folksy kind of space. Um, and so John Hancock brought his own thing to it and just ended up with a couple of themes that we use throughout the film. And they take on different forms and styles here and there, but um, it was uh, it was kind of the, that conversation where that, you know, a lot of it came from from Tim, weirdly. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's a rarity to have an original score that's all recorded with live instruments uh, these days. We, we really benefited from that and from the beautiful work that John did. So uh, Miles, is this the first project um, out of the Mastic and then Animation Accelerator? It is the first film to come out of the Accelerator, yeah. We wow. have, uh, yeah, we, it, it, I mean, we backed a number of other projects with grant money and, uh, and mentored people through them, but in terms of being produced by the program, this is our, our inaugural project. I'm assuming that the program is gonna continue. You guys are gonna do more of these? Absolutely, yeah. Wow, it's yeah. wonderful. It's, it's a it really, really fun. great start to it, for sure. Um, uh, Jared and Jerusha, I have one more question, and it's about sort of your your transition into animation. Um, you know, this and Thelma the Unicorn sort of you mentioned that they started at about the same time. What appealed to you about animation? Why does it make the decision to move from live action into animation? Oh man, it's limitless. You could do anything in animation. Yeah, yeah. And you can get weirder and weirder and it's totally acceptable in animation. <laughs> yeah, but it's, I mean, yeah, it, like Jerusha said, it, it's limitless. You can do anything. There's no, it's like you can do what you imagine and, and you're not really limited by, you know, physicality, I guess. It gives you a lot more freedom to be even more creative than you already are. Yeah, absolutely. I like that you so use the word creative and not weird. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, your films are already quite, um, they have a very unique voice and visual style that s sort of lends itself to animation. You know, yeah. your characters could very easily end up in an animated film. It would be, you know, their lives and their quirks and everything would be totally normal. Whereas in right. real life, exactly. they're quirky, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations, everyone, on the project. It's it's a wonderful, wonderful film. Uh, the the I was really taken by it. It's a really beautiful story, really well told. Um, thank you all so much for sharing your time. Um, and I can't wait to see more projects out of Mash Mast and Jerush and um, Jared. Can't wait to see your your film. It's going to be a lot of fun, I'm sure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks for having us. Okay. Well, hopefully, we'll have you back at Spark again in the future. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Bye. 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 So Bye. Much. Bye.